Okay, Blazing Truth says, Hi, I'm an ANCAP engineer who wants to completely phase out NASA and let the private industry go to work. Could you give a brief reply to the common objection, quote, but without NASA, there would be no, and then he's got a blank, and then with the parentheses, Apollo missions, internet, etc. There should be an end quotes there, but there's not. So technically, everything else in this thread is in this guy's quotation marks, and the universe blows up. We'll add that in there. Okay, so now I guess he's talking in. Essentially, how do Austro-Libertarians deal with high barriers to entry? Okay. Um, well, I have written on this. In several places, those of you who don't have my book, really, you're just, what reason is there for you to continue living? Uh, my Politically Incorrect Guide to Capitalism, in all seriousness, if you're sort of liking the answers I'm giving here and you and you haven't read that book, I would recommend that you, you get it. Um, my bank balance will thank you for it, because it does... Uh, I, I do explain this. So there, you know, this this kind of question is the sort of thing I tackle in that book. And I do all kinds of things like this, such as, you know, what about endangered species? You know, wouldn't they all good die out under the market if, if the government didn't come in and protect the bald eagle? Or, you know, uh, what about air pollution? What about uh, homeless people? You know, so I, I take on sort of fun public policy questions and give quick, you know, in my opinion, very pure free market analysis for that stuff. So as far as the space program being run by the government, I say, look, the first thing to realize is there's nothing magical about government employment per se. right? So the people who work for NASA, let, let's take the, the Apollo missions. That's a good one. It's not that those engineers and physicists and others who worked for NASA um, suddenly knew more information or, you know, were better scientists because they're getting their paychecks from the government, right? So if we could imagine a private employer hiring those people, I mean, in principle, a private firm could have sent spacecraft to the moon to plant an American flag, right? There, it's not that there's anything in terms of the laws of physics or the realities of engineering that meant, oh, this has to be a government operation. However, no private enterprise would have spent billions of dollars in the 60s to put an American flag on the moon and get some rocks and whatever else they did and to, you know, jump around and, and take, a, take a picture of or take a video of it. That, you know, you would say, <laughs> just like Mitt Romney saying to, you know, Newt Gingrich, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but something like if, if, if some executive came up to me and said he wanted to spend billions of dollars colonizing the moon, I would say you're fired, right? So if that really doesn't make sense to do right now, it certainly didn't make sense to do it back in the 1960s when it was a lot more expensive and people weren't as wealthy. So, uh, you know, the, the Apollo, when somebody says without NASA, there would have been no Apollo mission, I would say, right, and that's a good thing. The Apollo mission was incredibly wasteful. And that sounds, you know like a stick your head in the sand and so unromantic and oh you don't like space no i'm a total sci-fi geek All right i used to in high school i'd watch star trek instead of talking to girls you know just like probably every other libertarian guy so it's not that i'm against space exploration it's that i am for economic efficiency and the resources that went into sending a ship to the moon back then that those were that was a complete uh well, not a complete waste of resources. I mean, it was other things equal. That's cool that they put a flag on the moon and, you know, did some re genuine scientific research, I'm sure. But the point is that was way too expensive. The benefits were totally swamped by the costs. So there's... Um, now, in terms of economic theory, the only way you can justify government involvement in space exploration or other types of funding for science is that you say it has positive externalities, that there's spillover effects. And so, in other words, there are certain lines of research, like like building a super collider or something. You could say that is going to just shower all sorts of even narrowly economic benefits on humanity over the next 50 years from learning 
about the constituents of the atom and so on, or the you know various types of atoms and whatever, but it wouldn't pay for any firm to do it because they wouldn't be able to, to capture all of those benefits, right? It's not like they would be able to sell products and reap the tens of billions of dollars in gains that this new knowledge is showering on humanity. And so, like, you know, you could argue, and, and economists have argued, that that's the way to justify it, that the market would insufficiently invest in these lines because of this positive externality. So for that, I mean, with all that market failure literature, it's typically showing, what that stuff really showing is, we can logically imagine that the free market isn't the best of all possible institutions. And sure, that's true. But from that, it doesn't follow. And therefore, the real government in the real world ought to take whatever, hundreds of billions of dollars of from taxpayers at gunpoint and spend it on those things. That doesn't follow at all. So, um, and, and I think, I mean, just to take a few examples, like look at the space shuttle Challenger disaster. For those of you who are familiar with that, I know about it because I was a big fan of Richard Feynman, and he was one of the people that was on the commission appointed by President Reagan to look into it. And if you know the story, it's because it was too cold when they launched, and the, the O-rings, I'm... I forget the exact details, but when it's too cold, the O-rings were like real brittle, like they didn't expand or something like that. And so that's ultimately what led to, I guess, the leak of the fuel came out, and then the you know the the fuel tanks blew up when the thing was taken off. So it's not merely that they screwed up, and then when when Feynman was going in and investigating and talking to the engineers and stuff, I mean, it was it wasn't just like it was an honest screw up. It was that you know the lower level people we're warning the higher ups at NASA this this is dangerous this isn't safe you sh you know we need to not you know postpone the launch or in, in general we need to have a different procedure and and but yet the estimates for that type of failure were astronomically small and Feynman said he was looking at the numbers and he realized whoever came up with the estimates they had been picking the estimates for each component of like the list of things that would have to happen such that the string of them together was the number that they knew they wanted to have to in order to justify the, the program right so he could tell they sort of worked backwards they knew what they wanted the answer to be and then that's how they fudged the numbers and a lot of stuff it was like the numbers it was kind of arbitrary so it wasn't it wasn't like they were lying it was just he could tell that the way the institution was set up the the higher ups wanted this mission to go forward and want you know they didn't want to have to scrap the shuttle program or, or you know delay it for too long of a time, and so they just set the incentives up right such that that was what happened, All right? So things like, and then after the fact, you know, the the commission gave it a you know whitewash the inquiry, and it wasn't like a bunch of people got fired or anything. And NASA's budget certainly didn't get chopped in half because they killed a bunch of people for no good reason and wasted a billion dollars or whatever they did. That's not what happened, All right? So. What I'm saying is all of the inefficiency and corruption and failure to respond correctly after there's a massive scandal, all those things that we see in all the other areas of government are true when it comes to scientific exploits as well. And so I think all things considered, it would make far more sense for the government to not spend on these things and lower taxes and return those resources to the private sector. And yeah, it's true there might be less total money spent ostensibly on space exploration the year after the government did that, but I think even the smaller amount that was spent would be spent far more effectively. And so in terms of the actual advancement of space exploration, I think especially the longer the time frame you give it, the, the better it would be. So let me put it to you this way. If all the governments around the world stopped their spending right now on space exploration and then cut their taxes accordingly, right? So it's not that they could just spend the money on something else. They would have to return those resources to the private sector. I think there would be a moon base earlier than if they went on their current course. And I think there would be, you know, things colonizing factories and stuff on uh, mineral rich asteroids and stuff like that, I think would occur sooner the more that was relinquished to the private sector. Now, the, the, the 
development would be would be different. It would be more of a commercial development. So you wouldn't have necessarily, you know, new telescopes up there that could see distant quasars and things. You might have uh, stuff like little joy rides given to millionaires. Whereas, you know, maybe governments right now wouldn't spend a bunch of money developing ships that could go into low Earth orbit for a bunch of millionaires. Like, certainly the taxpayers wouldn't want to foot the bill for that, right? But space tourism would be an obvious thing to do in terms of private development while we're sort of learning the ropes. And how are they going to pay for that initially? Well, it's going to have to be wealthy people because the tickets for those kind of trips are going to be high in the beginning. So the the course of the development would would be much different if it were guided by profit and loss but i think by any reasonable criterion of humanity conquering the solar system it would be much quicker if we left that to the private sector